Hi, everybody. This is Marilyn. Um, do we have any audio? Can anybody hear me? And in case you can and you don't want to, there is a mute on your uh, hot com. And you can just mute away. Anyway, hi, everybody. This is Marilyn, and it is the noontime edition of Welcome to My World for the 11th of February. This is a Thursday. And my goodness, the um, the markets continue to just give us trades and trades and trades and trades. This is kind of a, a really nice time, uh, especially for those of you who are new and trying to learn this. Um, some of us that have been around a little while uh, are a little more familiar with sitting around uh, watching some paint dry for quite a while, looking for a trade. Boy, they were everywhere this morning. And in um, virtually every market you could think of. So um, let's see. This morning we have Mrs. Yellen testifying at uh, 10 o'clock. And her tactical brilliance never ceases to amaze me. But she says that um, they basically what she's saying is they don't know what to do. And that's, boy, is that ever a surprise. Anyway, um, the bond market this morning was, I mean, it was just one gift after another after another. And gold responded also. And it... Um, Gold has had some really nice trades today. The indices have also, I found, I like to trade TF a little better than the others. I think maybe today was uh, YM was a better index. It's, um, it's usually a good idea to have a, a small 30-minute chart of each of those. So you can take a quick look and assess which one is stronger and then uh, go with the strongest one if you're only going to trade one. Let's see. Um, we've got the the VIX is continuing to climb a little bit. It's, it's trading right now at its high for, oh, gee, um, six months or a year. It's trading at 28.67 right now. And the VIX is commonly called fear factor. When it is elevated, there is usually a lot of volatility expected because there's a lot of uncertainty with the stock market. And that, uh, no doubt, is a, is a good indicator for right now. The indices have have all been selling off since the first of the year. And we've had lots of trading opportunities with them. So um, it doesn't really matter. I, somebody typed in the chat this morning some real words of wisdom. It doesn't matter what the market does. Who cares? I never know what it's going to do, and I could care less what it's going to do. I just want it to move. Because that's where we as apex traders are going to make our money, is when it moves. Uh, don't try to second guess what's going to happen. Because the only person that really knows what's going to happen is a bus driver. And sometimes uh, I wonder, you know, what they're on. For instance, uh, crude oil. If you trade uh, crude oil or you use these uh, iZone charts, this is one of the real beauties of the iZone. If you look at mine, I changed, uh, well, these, I can see these orange candles better, but these orange candles are the indecision and the chop. And then you look down here at the Trendar, and the Trendar is every color except a solid one. It, there's there's no direction. There's no possible way you can trade that. Um, this morning I saw something on this. I I prefer the C's chart. Oh, this little 
stretch right in here from um, about 7.30 this morning to about 9. This, this red and green and red and green, and I mean, this looks really nice on the Christmas tree, but on these charts, this just absolutely makes me nuts. But what it does is caution you immediately. Uh, might want to find something else to trade and or come back when this thing has straightened out a little bit because this is just chop and chop. Before we got um, the iZone system, one thing I used was this deviation indicator down here and this, I call this bad guy country right here. These, I don't know what these things are, these mountain boulder things sticking up here. This is where, uh, this is where the bad guys will get you. Anytime you see this on this indication, on the deviation indicator, that's also a good warning to um, do something else. Do not try to trade through that. It's an exercise in losing money and becoming very frustrated and then throwing up your hands. So just, you know, I mean, if that's the way the bus driver is going to act, just don't get on a stupid bus. Buses run all day. There will be other ones. Then we've had some people, I really like the, um, I like the C's chart. When I'm trading crude oil, I use uh, a chart that I, I just don't have enough room to post everything in this camera space. But it's the one that um, I made the illustrations with in the forum. It's a little more difficult to learn, I think. Um, but I learned that back in the old days when we didn't have all this new wonderful stuff. And what we basically had is the the apex letters and a few other things, the range channels. So I just find it easier to trade crude oil that way. If anybody, um, I think Woody was in here earlier asking something about that. If anybody wants me to help them with uh, that, I will be happy to. Just let me know and we'll figure something out. Um, oh, I wanted to show you, uh, if you haven't noticed the C's chart, I don't know about iZone because I don't have enough monitor space for everything under the sun that I wish I did, but I probably couldn't keep track of it anyway. But this is gold, and you can see with this, um, this is just so easy to see and to trade. I don't typically uh, trend gold. I'm out for 20 ticks. I want an entry and out for 20 ticks. Gold can be very volatile. So if you have your ATM set and you're, you just get the entries, that can be a really nice thing to trade, but it needs to be in a trend. And there were several places to enter. If you're familiar with uh, with Lori's C's, the other one that was really great this morning was bonds. My goodness. Bonds do not give nice trades every day, so you have to learn to be very picky. Picky, picky, picky. But this morning, um, let's see. Where, oh, yes, right here. This, just about the time I got my system up, was a trend catcher with an Apex E. Um, it was above settlement. And to take this, it just went. I thought it would stop right here because this this is a three deviation level right here. And I thought, well, it will stop there. And it didn't. It went right on. Um, just super, super nice early morning trade. 
And then it, um, I have also noticed that Lori's elevators are very good to either stay, if you're, if you can sit through it and stay in your trade, um, it makes a good add-on spot because there'll be another uh, 10 or 12 ticks off of those most times. But it's just, and the, right off of the buy zone right here with the trend catcher and there's a deviation level right here, you can take an entry off of that and I wish it was like that every single solitary day. Unfortunately, that's not the case. So um, I want to remind you at uh, 1 o'clock today is the 30-year bond auction. So if you are trading uh, interest-related markets, uh, pay attention to that because it's likely to put some volatility, especially with Mrs. Yellen. Um, doing her thing today. Tomorrow morning is Friday morning, and at 8.30 is core retail uh, numbers, and at 10 o'clock there's some other economic numbers. So that would be a, a good thing to pay attention to at 8.30 tomorrow morning. Then on Monday, Monday is a banking holiday, and I think lots of government offices and buildings and what have you. I would suggest that if you are planning to trade Monday, you get uh, get in front of this so you've got your plan together for Monday. Some people trade on holidays, some people don't, but the information for when the markets are open will be on the Nadex website if you're trading Nadex, and you can go to the CME uh, website and get the information. We are doing the electronic trading through Globex, and they have the hours and the um, various markets and the holiday schedule on there, and that is the, the Oracle. So if you go to so-called internet sites and try to look for that stuff. CME is where your trades are going to be cleared through. So that's really the that's really the oracle. And let's see. Um, I've got some questions in here um, on ZN. I use a six tick on ZB. Um, John, I've, I've not tested that myself, so I don't really know. But what I would suggest you do is put up one of each side by side, maybe a six tick and a and a ten tick or an eight tick and a twelve tick or something like that, and and then make an observation. Go back over today and yesterday and three or four days, and see if you find one to be a little more choppy and maybe uh, would take you out of trades that you would like to have stayed in and the other chart will be a little smoother ride for you. So at least that's the way I do it. Uh, we've also had some um, people in here asking about the um, alchemy of uh, charting and that is coming i i'm not sure if the um, educational videos are up on the site with full access but i know that um, the beta testing team is on a mission to get this pushed out as soon as possible it will take some some uh it pulls a lot of data off your computer. It's going to take some computer resources. So if you are interested in using that, just a word of caution, do not immediately load it up with every market known to mankind. Oh, only the ones that you truly have an interest in trading because otherwise you're going to you run a risk unless you have a very powerful computer that it might uh, freeze stuff and Believe me, 
I've been there and I know just how frustrating a frozen ninja trader is. So, um, let's see. Um, I don't know if we have people trading uh, beans on Nadex. I don't know about uh, futures in this room, but beans really put up, uh, boy, they just bolted straight up in about an hour. Sometimes those are good trades. And um, I think that's about it. Until you see, if you're trading crude oil, until you see this chop straighten out, um, I would not be taking any entries. Let me find the current. This is just a bunch of stuff that as far as I'm concerned it's untradeable but it's also the time of day uh, the big boys have gone to lunch so when they come back we'll see what they decide anyway um, I think that's about it for today I know we had some people who were asking me about coming on in the morning. I might do that on Mondays because there isn't much going on. It depends. I found that doing that, I was missing trades that I uh, really would like to have taken. So uh, try and play that by ear. Anyway, um, this has been my view from my world in Apex land. Brought to you by Apex Investing. I'll see you tomorrow. Thanks.